John Sermons reporting for Kids First, and today I'm speaking with Ms. Abigail Freeman about Goodnight Oppie. Ms. Freeman is a Deputy Project Scientist at the Mars Science Laboratory at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, where she is an integral part of the team that sends rovers to the Red Planet and tracks the data that the devices send back. She started a program in high school when she was part of an outreach program that brought her to GPL, where she witnessed the rover opportunity land on Mars in 2004. Welcome to our show, Ms. Freeman. Hi, Tiana. Nice to meet you. So nice to meet you as well. You look lovely. Oh, thank you. So do you. Thank you. So let's get right into it. So you became involved with NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab and with Opportunity as a high school student in 2004. What lesson do you think Oppie's journey has for scientists and students in general? Oh, I think Oppie taught us the value of persevering and to keep going, even when things get hard, even when there's dust storms and there's problems with your software. I guess that's more of a rover thing, but mm -hmm. you know, if you keep at it, you can keep going and there's hopefully a wonderful reward at the end of discoveries you can make and, and things you'll be able to find and learn. Of course, that's an amazing message. And I personally was able to get that out of watching. Good night, Oppie. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Yes. And so you never actually got to see the rovers driving around on the surface of Mars. So what was it like to see a simulation of that in Gunayaki? It was so special for me. As you said, we can't actually see the rovers. We don't have a camera looking at the rover. But what I thought was so amazing about this movie was that the animators took the actual terrain based on images that we had from the rover and they were able to use that to build this Martian world that looked really realistic and the rovers looked really realistic. And so this was really the first time that I was able to see what all this exploration would have looked like. And I have to say the first image of the movie when you see Opportunity perched on the side of that crater, I literally gasped out loud just seeing the scale of it all. I had no idea. It was so cool. Yeah, it definitely looked cool. And even just seeing the little scenes where they would have the messages to Abby, like, uh, with the shadow when they were like, it's just your shadow. It was definitely very cute and also funny moments that they added. Yeah, that was cute. That's not quite what it looks like when we drive the rover, but I loved it in the movie. I think it was a wonderful way to tell the story. Yes, I agree totally. And just for one last question, why do you think Oppie is so relatable and loved by everyone? That's a great question. And I wish I knew the real answer, I think. Oppie is something different to a lot of different people. I can tell you for me personally why I love Oppie, and that is because she really showed me that there was a way we could explore, and she showed me how amazing that was and how exciting it was, and that it's something that I could be involved in. And I thought that was so cool, and I love her for that, and I love that I was able to be a part of that exploration, and I'm still in shock that I was based on how long she lasted. Mr. White is best known for The Case Against Eight, Good Old Frida, and now Good Night Oppie. Welcome to our show. Hi, how are you? I'm doing fine yourself. I'm doing very well. Thank you for chatting with me. Of course. So let's get right into it. What inspired you to create this documentary about Opportunity or Oppie and the Mars Exploration Rover? So when I was a kid in the 80s and 90s, I loved space. I loved math and science. I thought I wanted to be an astronaut, but that never worked out for me. Um, and I became a filmmaker. And now that I'm in my adulthood, and you know, I think I've made 12 films now, I was waiting to make a documentary about space. And this story came into my life a couple years ago from Amblin Entertainment, which is Steven Spielberg's company. And I loved the idea of a robot that was supposed to live for 90 days, but survive for 15 years. And I said uh, yes to participating. That's amazing. Uh, combining your childhood dream with your passion now. Yes, exactly. Yes. And so in what ways do you connect or relate to Oppie most? Oh, man. Well, uh, I was definitely not uh, Little Miss Perfect, as she's described in the film, or the perfect child. I was probably 
uh, more like spirit for my parents and caused quite a few problems. But uh, I relate to that sense of of being on a mission when I'm making a film and wanting to do whatever it takes to see it see it through uh, to completion. And I understand, you know, that these robots are a combination of thousands of human beings um, working together to do something incredible. And thousands of people don't work on my films, but hundreds of people do. And I have to rely on a lot of people being incredible at their jobs, things I have no idea how to do, how to edit a movie, how to shoot a movie, how to do animation, sound design. These are all experts in their fields that that work with me on these films. So I definitely relate to that type of collaboration. That's amazing. You def uh, Trust is definitely an important part of the process. And I would have to say the documentary ended up being amazing. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm hoping a lot of young people like yourself will watch it and talk about it. Yeah, so I will definitely spread the message. Oh, thank you so much. Of course. What was your favorite moment to include about Abby's journey? Uh, my favorite moment is the selfie um, towards the end of the film. So I think it's a reminder to the audience, you know, Industrial Light and Magic do these amazing visual effects on our film where hopefully you feel like you are on Mars with these robots. But the selfie, which came in Oppie's 14th year, is a reminder to the audience that the human beings who are working on these missions never got to see the journey in the way you are right now. Right. The best that they ever got was this blurry black and white selfie, and it meant so much to them to, for the first time, see you know their girl on Mars. Of course, that was definitely a beautiful and heartwarming moment. And just for my last question, what will audiences learn and take away from watching Good Night, Oppie? Uh, I hope that people take away that idea of human beings coming together to do something incredible for, for, the, for the greater good of mankind. Even if we don't ever see uh, the results of that in our lifetimes, I think these types of uh, scientific and planetary uh, discoveries are part of the long game. It's like a relay race. It's a long game where, you know, something might take 30 or 40 years, or there might be things we work on for 20 years that end up being massive failures, like the two missions that predated Opportunity and Spirit. But that's not wasted time or money or effort, because it's all part of a, a long game in making, um, you know, Earth a better place for mankind. Thank you, Mr. White, for speaking with me today. For everyone watching, be sure to look for Good Night Oppie in theaters now and on Amazon Prime starting November 23rd, 2022. That's all for this interview for Kids First. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our next reviews or interviews. Again, I'm Tian Thurman. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye.